If you book time off work, book flights, holiday, whatever else it might have been for the European tour next year, put it on hold. Maybe ask for your holiday back. Uh, yeah, we're in eighth. We've lost the last four league games in a row. It's not going great. Yes, folks, how is it going? Welcome back to Park to Prem here at a rugby town that is floundering, but is still in the FA Cup. Last year in this competition, we got battered by Manchester United at Wembley in the semi-final. A chance for revenge? Maybe. We play them today in the quarterfinals. Last episode, we played through the least eventful transfer deadline day ever, and then we managed to get a really good result against Everton. I was feeling great after that. Now you look at the recent form, and you can understand why I'm feeling a little bit gloomy. Now, we did have Manchester United and Tottenham to play in this run of games. Knew those were going to be tricky league matches. This one here, though, I thought was going to be more winnable. And yet, we bottled it against Crystal Palace. A 2-1 defeat. Nicholas Jackson scoring. Yeah, Nicholas Jackson scoring the goal. I'm so angry. The Crystal Palace game annoyed me, but at home against Manchester United, there was a little bit of hope we could make something happen. We didn't. We lost in that game as well. Fixtures were piling up as we took on Burnley in the FA Cup. We won this one at an extra time. I played a heavily, heavily rotated team in this game, picked up a couple of injuries as well, which certainly doesn't and hasn't helped our case in recent games. The injuries have been kind of annoying for us, really, and a win here was good. The manner of it, a lot less so. Following on from that, we took on Tottenham. Makera Thorns got another goal to add to his collection for the season. He has three from centre-back, which is pretty blooming good. What was less good, however, was the manner in which we couldn't hold on to that lead. We conceded a goal in the 84th minute, and we conceded a penalty in the 95th. Lee Min was sent off as well against his former club. Yeah, all in all... Not a good day. But you know what? Three defeats in a row is bad, but we had 19th place Brighton to play. 19th! We can't lose to them. No, no, we, we definitely can. We were 2-1 up in this game as well. And we bottled it. Again. Yep, yeah, four defeats in a row, all by one goal. And we're tumbling down the league. So here are the league stand-ins, and if there's a crumb of comfort to hold on to, which I'm trying to find at the moment, our goal difference is still really, really good at positive 21. When you compare that to the teams in and around us, we're in a good spot. What makes it a slightly less good spot is that Newcastle in ninth are actually equal on points with us. Arsenal, who as of last episode we were chasing, uh, are, well, they've gone now. They're 14 points clear of us. And Tottenham in sixth, we trail by five points. Even with a game in hand, we can't get back into the top six by just winning. I wish there was something obvious to point to and say, that's the issue. I think it's a combination of some tricky games, fixtures piling up a little bit, a little bit of fatigue. Injuries have been stretching our team thin as well. If we just look at the injury history and sort by kind of latest injuries, you can see they have been piling up over the course of February. But... I can't really use that as an excuse. Uh, I feel like this chart here probably is a pretty good example. The dash line is last season's injuries. The solid line is this year's injuries. February, January, December, not good months. On top of that, though, when you look at the lineup that I consider my best 11, the low average ratings in the last five games, I think further magnify the issue. Before the first game today against Manchester United, I've gone through every underperforming player and criticised their form individually. I think that is the only reason why the morale is still not absolutely awful at this moment in time. We have got our youth intake to come at some point today, but first and foremost, we've got this Manchester United game. Not an easy game in its own right, and if you were thinking, well, maybe you've got a more winnable game after that, Jack. Not really. Uh, for whatever reason, I've decided coming back for a game against Liverpool away from home is a good idea. Not sure it is. But alas, this is the game we are going to focus on first and foremost. An FA Cup quarterfinal affair against Manchester United. I've mentioned injuries. Gasperi is the only man who still has an injury, although Ngoma coming back from injury and elsewhere Pietro also coming back from injury. Condition not awful across the players. I have been able to rest things up. And when I look at the starting 11, it's a starting 11 that prior to the last month, I probably would have backed to try and cause an upset here at home. I mean, right now, I just don't want to be embarrassed. 
There's been sleepless nights in the build-up to this game, as I remember this game at the end of last year. We lost 5-1 at Wembley in the semi-final of this competition. I would love to get revenge so much. And on top of that, given our recent form and how we're tumbling down the league, the FA Cup might be our route into European football. Of course, we would have to win it. We're three games away from doing that. And this Manchester United team, they've won their last five games on the bounce. And they're not playing a rotated team today. OK, Fawns is playing against his former club, of course, the left centre-back, with a big game today, I'm hoping. He's got a chance to prove himself against the team that decided he didn't have a future here. Misiak, by the way, bringing the ball out and laying it off to Bolton. We are looking confident when we have the ball. I do feel like, as much as I want to be doom and gloom due to recent form, there's been moments where we've played good football, and it's not like we've been killed in any game. We've not been murdered savagely. They've been hard-fought affairs. I just hope we can show a bit more fight than we showed in last year's semi-final as NDIA burst through the middle and nearly opened up the goal scoring. 15 minutes played, we're showing signs of life. They've not yet had... <laughs> Why did I say it? They've not yet had a shot, I was going to say. They've had one now. That hits the post and comes out. Marcus Rashford still with the ball in a dangerous area, trying to make something happen. Pacho to Milano. I mean, are we going to be fine? Manga on the far side. Always been more of an anime fan myself. He whips it in. Cassidy... Rashford, I'll tell you what, that goal would not look out of place in blue lock, would it? I've realised half the people don't know that reference. It doesn't matter if you don't know it, just Google it. Um, it's an annoyingly good goal. It's a really annoyingly good goal. It looks like a goal out of a comic, doesn't it? Manga, Cassidy, scissor kicks it, Rashford volleys it in. I don't want to sound like sour grapes. My players don't do that. <laughs> my, my players can't do that. Anyway, Ospina, what can you do? He gives it short to Faye. Rojas, I'll tell you what, if we now score a goal like the one they've just scored, I'll take it all back. Ospina, the number 11 to Bolton at right back. Snedden, back to Bolton. Riviere with the ball. The deep line playmaker to Bolton. Ospina through the middle, burst through, beat the offside trap. And sadly, it saved. I was waiting for the offside flag to be raised. It would have counted. He was onside. And having missed the opportunity, Ospina now trying to make amends with the corner. And he will make amends. I forgive him. We've scored from the resulting corner. He's got the assist. Bolton with the goal. Bolton, of course, a product of Liverpool's academy. With that in mind, I'm sure he's going to enjoy this goal here. Not the best of goalkeeping by Manchester United. I don't care, though. We're back in the game. And well, could we make it twice as nice? We've scored from one set piece. Let's score from another. NDIA back post. Snedden is under it. Cleared away. Rojas. Faye scores. It's 2-1. What a goal that is. Sam Fay hasn't been as prolific, it's safe to say, in the Premier League, but it's very easy to forget he's a teenager. He is a child, and yet he's doing this against Manchester United. The number nine, our vice captain with the departure of Chris Meppham, finding the top corner. Okay, five minutes left of the half, 2-1 to the good. We absolutely deserve to be where we're at right now, and well, we could get another. Rojas gifted the ball for a moment. Sadly, he was dispossessed and stripped of the ball at the very last moment. Nico Williams Jr., or is it Neko Williams Jr.? I think it's Neko is the junior. They've got the ball through the middle. I'm confused by brothers. Our team are confused by defending. It's 2-2. Two -two. I couldn't even enjoy being ahead for two minutes. Also, it's the scary French bloke from, la from last season. He scored a lot against us at Wembley. That is not the best of, well, communications, is it, between Fawns and Snedden. They both are England youth internationals. They played in the same under-21s team. You wouldn't know they spoke the same language based on what's just happened there. And at the break, it's 2-2. Just as a reminder, if this finishes 2-2, I think, does it go to a replay or does it go to extra time? I know the FA Cup rules have changed and we played extra time against Burnley, but in an earlier round... We did play a replay. I don't, we'll find out if it gets to 90 minutes. I'm trying to act all cool and casual. Uh, let's be honest. I probably should just check the rules, really, shouldn't I? Okay, I can confirm it will just go to extra time. Given the fact the Liverpool game is in a few days, really could do without another 30 minutes of football to play. Misiak, the youngster at Advanced Playmaker, is not having a particularly good game today. He's not had a great introduction, to be honest, to the squad. I feel like when you look at him on paper, he's got the quality. He's not yet shown it here. And I think I've seen enough in this game. I'm going to take him off the pitch. I am going to bring in Goma, who's coming back from injury. Ospina did get an assist in this game, but to be honest, besides that, he really hasn't done anything. I'm going to bring in Alvarez, who's been a great little super sub for us. We're in the 52nd minute. We only get three subs, just as a little reminder. 
So with that in mind, I've made two. I'm going to hope they can make the difference. Alvarez whipping in the corner. Sneddon! I saw the net ripple and I thought it had gone in, but it's hit the side netting. Okay, Fawns with a free kick to NDIA. He lays it inside to Ngoma. Fawns now back with the ball, going all the way back to Schumacher in net. I feel like on the balance of play, we can feel a little hard done by not to be ahead in this game. We've had a lack of the ball, but when we have had it, we've created stuff. And Faye has one. Could he get another? Not to the first time of asking, but a fortuitous rebound sees him grab it at the second time of asking. It's 3-2. Sometimes you just got to launch it long and hope you win the flick on. Zro has flicks it on a bit of fortune as Faye got a rebound here. But from a very difficult angle... He's found the back of the net, so I won't criticise him. Already mentioned the fact that we've got our youth intake to come today. It's great to see a product of our academy, Faye, getting so involved in the play. Winning the ball back yet again there. However, Manchester United still bringing it forward. Manga, this time shoots over. That man was involved in their first goal. He is scary out at right wing back, isn't he, this guy? 21 years old, Egyptian international. He's quite quick. There's 10 minutes left here, and it is still a one-goal game. To get a goal now would be quite nice. It would certainly lower the nerves. It'd be such an annoying, unlikely victory as well. Having bottled it in the league repeatedly lately, to get a result in the Cup against the team currently top of the Premier League, I mean, it'd be nice. In some ways, we are potentially going to be able to deny them some kind of domestic treble, or at least, you know, a double. We don't want them winning everything, Manchester United. They only finished, I think, 8th or 7th in the Premier League last year, so they're having a great league campaign. That said, well, we're on the attack here. NDIA puts it in, and Goma was lurking. Now we have to watch out for the counter. Evan Ferguson lays it wide. We are in hot pursuit of Williams Jr. here on the near side. He was involved in a goal previously. On this occasion, though, Sneddon is going to win the ball, and now the centre-back, he's going on an adventure. Does he know where he's going? Because I don't know where he's going. He gives it to him. Goma Faye is there. It was offside, but that was a shot at the hat-trick. There's four minutes of added time. They are coming. They are going. And on the one hand, I want to be delighted. You know, we've just beaten Manchester United, for crying out loud. On the other hand, how can I not be a little bit annoyed that we can do this? I should just live commentate the entire season. That, that's what I need to do at this point. Just for context here, Manchester United have lost two league games all year, both away from home against Everton and Liverpool. We have just managed to beat them there. Are they still in European competitions? They're still in the Europa League as well. Yeah, I am a bit annoyed about this. Sam Faye, by the way, man of the match. Give him some praise. 9.2 rating, continuing to get better and better. And I'm just going to do this because it makes me feel warm and fuzzy. Look how much he's improved during his time at the club. It's absolutely sensational. And actually, just speaking of homegrown talent improving at the club, I have been keeping a very close eye on David Gilliand. This guy, he's still getting better and better. Just as a reminder, he only generated at the club two years ago. He's finally shown some signs of progress, especially recently. You can see the graph here. Um, now that he's training full time, because he wasn't doing that until he turned, I think, 17 or 18. Now that he's training full time, we are seeing improvements. Anyway, three days time, Liverpool away. An away day to Anfield await. Somehow, I've never done the away day at Anfield. I've kind of put it off for a special occasion. Today is that occasion. Don't go anywhere. There were a few away days last year that I didn't do, just because I knew we'd be back in the Premier League eventually. We needed to save some, and one of those was Liverpool's away day to Anfield. Now, of course, I am a Liverpool fan, so naturally, I have to attempt to remove bias as I review Anfield today there probably will still be some bias. Now, first things first, I will level with you. Car park in Anfield, not exactly exemplary. Uh, here is Stanley Park car park. This is the extent of the parking, and it's more so for the park than the stadium. But don't let that ruin things. Also, here we have the LFC official club store. We should, I believe, and we can, go right up to it. I know what you're thinking, Jack. Is it a superstore or a mega store? Or is it just a store? Because, of course, we don't want anything before it. Well, here's the bad news. I already know the answer to this. It's a superstore. It doesn't say superstore on the outside, but the sign says superstore. I can't argue with it. I feel like I've not bigged up this park enough. Look, you get a lovely park, lovely ponds at Stanley Park, lovely little picnic before you're away day, imagine. Now, of course, the Anfield Road stand has been renovated in recent years. I don't think we can actually get an updated view of it unless... Uh, okay, no, we can't get an updated view of it. Who who stood here and did a photosphere in 2010 and thought, yeah, this is a good one. Really got a good angle of Anfield here. 
Someone did not understand their assignment. Now, you can go around the Liverpool FC Museum inside. I, I don't want to do the whole thing. You know, I don't want to ruin the club's potential to make money by inviting people in. But instead, well, <laughs> okay. I thought we were going to be in the museum. I've ended up in the changing room. And you can somewhat date the date of this picture based on the shirts. Oh, my word. You know what? This, some of this is a remnant of a traumatic era at Liverpool Football Club. I don't really want to remember. I mean, to be fair, Aspas wasn't that bad. Suarez had already arrived. It wasn't terrible in 2014. Just going for an explore behind the scenes. Yeah, this is old footage, isn't it? Vintage Barclays, as they would say. RIP the Barclays Premier League. I'm also pleased to report, as part of the behind the scenes, uh, you can go around the entire pitch on Google Maps, or at least I thought I was going to be able to. I can't go that way. Can I go the other way? Oh my god, I clicked once and I think I've just teleported halfway around the pitch. Can we go Can we go round? We can go round! Oh my word, it's been a while since we've done a lap of honour. Although, this is from 2014, so it is rather out of date at this point. Here is a slightly updated view in March 2019. I don't want to admit at this point how many dots I've clicked through trying to find a latest picture version. I've been going a while. I've come to the conclusion I can't find updated footage. Let's just go behind the scenes some more. Let's go on an adventure. Uh, I'm going to go this way. I feel like I'm not meant to be here. You know, you know, like if you've have you ever gone out of classes when you're at school and snuck out and you're wandering around the hallways, that's how I feel right now. I don't feel like I'm meant to be here. I am in the museum. I am in the museum. Oh god, this I don't want I don't want to remember the this period of time. Brendan Rogers, current manager. No, no, thank you. There's gotta be a framed Ali Sissoko shirt somewhere in here. Where is Ali Sissoko? This is from 2014, to be fair. So, so maybe they have since put up an Ali Sissoko memorial, and I just can't find it. I thought I'd come to Google Earth to try and get an updated view of the ground in all its glory. Uh, I can confirm, can't view it in all its glory. They still were building the Anfield Road end at the time of this being captured. But nevertheless, here is Anfield. What a beautiful stadium. Definitely not biased in any way. Will admit, parking, lacklustre. Location's nice though, isn't it? Like, it's not bad. And there was also the museum, although there was no Ali Sissoko tribute and... Superstore. Superstore. It, it, just call it a store for crying out loud. I feel like I didn't really talk much about the inside of the stadium, but the actual stadium itself is a cool one in terms of how it's been built up over the years. It's a bit of a blend of new and old, but there's not a lot to do inside. Besides the museum, there's no rock climbing. Brighton really did knock it out of the park with that, didn't they? With that in mind, I am going to give Anfield an away day score, and it pains me to say this, but I'm not biased. Six and a half out of ten. I'm sorry. You know, based on the criteria I've set over the last two years, that's what it deserves. Who am I kidding? The guy does the spreadsheet for me. Give it a 10, please. Thank you. 10. It's a 10. I very casually mentioned guy who does the spreadsheets there. Nir, if you're watching, thank you very much, mate. He does these spreadsheets throughout the series that we've done so far. They're useful for me. They're not actually set up, I don't believe, to stop you guys vandalizing them. Otherwise, I would link them down in the comments. Yeah, I know what you lot are like. You'd probably delete all the data and leave me sad. Speaking of people making me sad, uh, Liverpool probably going to do that to me here. They are second in the league. We are eighth. Once upon a time, we were kept challenging near the top. I'm not going to ever pretend we were in a title race, but when you look at the past positions, we've been falling off just a little bit. If we got some kind of result today, it would be a surprise. Liverpool have not dropped points very often. If they win this game, they move two points behind Manchester United. They're going to want to win this. As for ourselves, a win here doesn't actually change our position. We would still be an eighth. Now, when it comes to the team for today's game, Bolton is suspended. This man, he loves to get booked. Ten yellow cards in all compositions. He's been a very, very naughty boy. As a result of that, Mascara is going to come in to play at right back for us. He has been particularly reliable, it has to be said, at right back so far this season. Six assists in 12 games is not too shabby, and he's developing really nicely too. When it comes to the rest of the team, Lee Min back from suspension. Ah, uh, I kind of want to bring him in. I kind of want to do it, and I think I'm going to have to. NDIA, I'm going to drop... Discussed last episode the whole centre-back dilemma. Still just too scared by his marking and tackling to play him at centre-back. Misiak's not been good either. I wasn't thinking of doing this, but now i thought of it. I'm going to do it. Murphy and Goma, come on down, my friend. He has been reliable so far this year. I'm hoping he can step up in this one too. Of course, a defeat here would make it five on the trot in the Premier League. We do not want that. But when I look at their team... 
It's a little bit scary, and based on the teams that we've lost against, including Tottenham and Manchester United, I kind of expect to lose this one as well. I suppose the silver lining is, much like I mentioned at the start of the year, our schedule was very front-loaded. We had all the difficult teams to play in the first half of the season, uh, or rather the first half of the first half. Kind of first 10 games, it was some tricky ones. I think this is the last of the particularly tricky league games we have on the bounce. So with that in mind, if we could just make something happen here, that might set us up nicely for a run of more winnable games. I am conscious our last two games of the year are against Wolves, who are not a million miles behind us, and Newcastle, who are currently right up alongside. It could be that we go into the final game and the final episode of the season with a whole lot to play for. Anyway, away from home here, this is the kind of game that I feel like you turn up to as a newly promoted team, you clench your butt cheeks and just hope it's all going to be over and not be too painful. Although, maybe we could cause an upset because Ospina is in behind and Ospina scores inside the first 90 seconds. It is that man again as well. Sam Fay, two goals last game, turning provider on this occasion, dinks it forward to Ospina, he gets it out his feet, and finds the bottom corner. Rare occasion, by the way, where we're coming up against a team that play the exact same formation as us. Liverpool love the 4 triple 2 as well. It's, it's very hot right now. It's very in. At the moment, we are winning the battle of the 4 triple 2s. I'm going to hope that continues here as Hadel for them in goal. He's come to the halfway line. They're all thereabouts to deal with things. Then I'll get it for to Ray Blen, who scores. And I know what you're thinking. Who is Brad Ray Blaine? Ray Blaine? Ray Blaine? He's very good. I'll show you him in a moment. And by very good, what I mean is he's that one player you see in every football manager save game where England get like a godlike goal-scoring striker who's just terrifying. This man is that man in this universe. Uh, here he is, 23 years old, 26 caps. He's got 20 dribbling with some insane pace and acceleration. In fact, all his physicals are kind of mad. Uh, yeah, he's got model citizen personality. He's valued at 223 <laughs> million pounds he's quite good. Okay, look, it's 1-1. One, one. It's not ideal, but I mean, you know what? No, I'm lying. It is ideal. A draw here would be a massive result at Anfield. It's annoying because we had the lead and we've now given it away, but I've got to believe we are going to be in it to win it as Penner brings the ball forward. Unfortunately for us, blazes that one over the Crossy. Do people still say Crossy, Crossy, Crossbar, Crossy? I feel like people used to call it Crozzy. Or maybe I've just made that up. Okay, five minutes left to the half. We've limited Liverpool to two shots on target so far in this game. They've had a whole lot of shots off target as well, but we're not disrespecting and disgracing ourselves with our performance so far. We look clinical on the break, and Ospina, well, I'm looking for him to break again. On this occasion, Hadel tips it wide. That said, Murphy and Goma, he's on the pitch. The wonder of a left foot, he's going to whip it in. And pick up out their goalkeeper perfectly. Uh, yeah, that's not how I imagined it. We did have two minutes of added time at the end of the half. That has not amounted to anything whatsoever. It remains 1-1 in this game. Not awful. Not amazing. But we're hanging on in there. I am just looking at Lee Min on a 6.3 rating at left back. Maybe not 100% match sharp for this game after he was missing for the last game. And of course, he was sent off against his former club Tottenham and we lost to them. With that in mind, I'm just going to bring in NDIA. I have the luxury of being able to bring in someone that good. And Goma's not been particularly amazing in this game either. I'm going to make a double change early. Misiak, the youngster... I don't know why I'm bringing him on in this one. There's a voice in the back of my head that says, this is his breakout moment. I hope that voice is a voice of reason and reality and not my own delusions. Although being real for a moment, it's probably delusion. Look, I trust the 18-year-old to step up and make some magic happen for us here. If we do hang on for just a point, I would certainly take that. A game where at the start of the year, you wouldn't expect anything away against Anfield. I definitely feel like this year I'm guilty of perhaps having my expectations set so high based on how we started the year. Maybe this recent form is just a better reflection of where we're at as a football club. Maybe we're not kind of best of the rest when it comes to, you know, all the, the mainstays and expected teams you see in European football. Maybe instead we are just kind of a solid mid-table 10th place team. That said, given how close it is and given where we're at with the fixtures that remain... I want to believe that we can still push on and try and make something happen, but we've got to dig deep here as Gilmore is looking to get it forward. Echeverry, the Argentine shoots, and that shot from range has hit the post, and fortunately for us, it's gone to a defender. 20 minutes left here. I want to make some more changes to try and make something happen. I am going to do something bold. Sam Faye 
Go play as a striker, my friend. Be free in the final third. And I'm going to bring in Pietro in behind. Pietro, by the way, was last year's next-gen runner-up. I'm hoping he might win it this year as we get the voting in the next few weeks. But, yeah, I, I need some magic from him in this game. I'm looking at all these young players I'm throwing on, hoping that they're going to, well, swim and not sink. We're going to find out exactly what's going to happen to them in the next 12 and a bit minutes here. Liverpool in possession. Zhao Victor inside to Gilmore for them. Gilmore back wide to the left back. The number three back to Gilmore. They are knocking the ball around confidently here, aren't they? Echeverry through the middle. And Schumacher's actually made a save. I can't believe it. He's barely done anything for us, the goalkeeper, this year, it feels like. He's made the stop there. He's now on a 7.2 rating. He's absolutely bloody massive. NDIA heads it away. McAllister's still with it in a dangerous area. But we've dealt with it there, and the ref gives, I think, an offside. Oh, my word. I'm not enjoying this. Liverpool, of course, desperate to win this game. They will feel like they should win it. That looked offside to me. And it was offside. Football managers just show me highlights to mess with me. I'm going to get shouty shouty. The demand more is coming out. How much added time is there to hold on? There's five minutes of it. Trent Alexander-Arnold whipping it in. And Schumacher clutching onto that ball makes another sensational stop in goal. That said, I fear it might not be the end of the highlight. It might not be all said and done. Because... They've still got the ball and the highlight is just not ending. At this point, I just want full time. I just want to hear the final whistle. I'm sure some of my players are thinking the exact same thing, but Liverpool on the attack again. And we've just got lucky. Fourth has completely missed the target. Two minutes left. Two minutes to hold on tight for what could be a massive point. And we are going to manage to do it away from home against a Liverpool team currently in second. We've shown some resilience there, some defensive solidity as well. Schumacher, 7.5 rating in goal. I'll be honest, this performance right here reminds me of the draw that we managed to get against Manchester United 1-1 at Old Trafford earlier on in the year. With that result, Liverpool now four points behind Manchester United. So even if Manchester United lose a game, they would remain top. As for ourselves, we do find ourselves four points behind Everton and four points behind Tottenham. At least in the case of Everton, we have a game in hand. But over our shoulders, Newcastle in ninth are one point behind us with a game in hand. So it's, it's not ideal. A draw is a good result there. Three points would have been a lot, lot nicer. Now, like I already mentioned, this was a brutal run of games. When I look at our upcoming fixtures, Leicester in 11th, Aston Villa in 16th, Nottingham Forest in 14th, Luton in 18th, West Ham in 12th. In fact, next month, we don't play anyone in the top half. And in fact, between now and ne the end of next month, we don't play anyone in the top half. I'm hoping the two results today are maybe a sign that we can turn things around still. One final thing to conclude on, youth intake. It did happen during today's episode. I didn't want to talk about it. It is almost as bad as last year. I mean, this is it. This is the intake. Bon appétit. Uh, Cordoni here. The pick of the bunch, if you can call it a pick. It's a rotten bunch we've picked from. There is literally no reason to get excited about any of this intake, is there? Now, over in the FA Cup, the other quarterfinal between Middlesbrough and Newcastle has not been played yet. Manchester City and Arsenal already through. We will play the winner of the battle in the North East. Newcastle and Middlesbrough, they play in a few days' time. Whoever we get drawn against, we will likely be coming back to play next episode. It's a return to Wembley. We've been here before. Thank you so much for watching today's video. As always, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. It's been some rocky form lately, but definitely some reason for optimism. Players are starting to turn up. The fixtures are going to get a little bit more spread out. Fitness can hopefully be regained. And well, I hope that when we return, there's more green on this screen here because this just makes me feel sad. Have a lovely rest of your day. I'll see you tomorrow for an FA Cup rerun, the semi-final. We've been here before. Tomorrow, we're going to do better. I'll see you guys then. I'm out.